If you're a celebrity, then becoming a brand ambassador means adding another revenue stream. And sometimes it's done simply for a good cause. The great thing is that each one of us can be an everyday ambassador for the South African dream. And Zahir Mohammed is a fantastic example. He lists going to markets, good food, baking and surfing among his passions. So Michelle went to find out more. Some chefs do a dawn patrol of the produce markets, while others wait to the fishing wharves. But when Michal arranged a meeting with Zahir Mohammed, he discovered that he had to beat the sun to the beach. Zahir Mohammed is driven by all things gastronomic. His food philosophy is that it must invoke fond memories of home. So when the call came in to sample one of his dishes, I was more than willing to take up the experience. So here, how are you doing? How cold was that water? Oh, it is absolutely freezing. Michelle arrived at Zahir's Hout Bay Bistro to be greeted by the aroma of fresh baking. Zahir gave up a career in the ad industry to move to Cape Town, where he met Misha, the love of his life. His other passion is cooking and baking, with a preference for rustic cuisine over fine dining. Zahir, I'm sure you're feeling refreshed after your morning surf. Yes, totally. I, uh, it's, a, it's been a really good start to the morning and I'm feeling fantastic. Now tell me, what delectable dishes are we preparing today? I'm going to be starting off with a Cape Malay fish curry and then I'm going to be doing the flaky authentic ruti with a traditional Cape Malay kusista and uh, chai tea. And then I'll be serving up a spiced cumin pear and rock it with fresh mozzarella salad. Well, tell me a bit more about the ingredients we're using. I've got some beautiful fresh yellowtail, and then we've got some fresh tomatoes over there. We've got some tomato puree. We've got some uh, fish masala, which is hot, and then we've got the mild uh, fish masala. Cumin over here, some garam masala over there, and then we've got some ginger, some fresh chopped garlic, and then some red onions, some flour over here, some bay leaves, pears, and then all my knives. Zahir, you've pre-prepared the roti dough. Tell me what's all included in the ingredients. In there we've got some stone ground uh, cake flour, we have um, some oil, and then we've got some lukewarm water, and some uh, Malden sea salt. I'm going to chop this into little discs, and then we'll roll it out into like little flatbreads. Uh, Michelle, could you please pass me the butter? Sure. We're going to be taking that and then just gently rubbing that into the dough. Okay, so this is how we're going to start. We're going to fold it in nicely over there and then we're going to lock it in. Gently seal it closed. You're so passionate. Where did that passion come from? My grandmother is a, is a very big inspiration to my cooking career and like my lifestyle. Showing me that like following your passion is always important. So you're just going to, to do that just to give it a little bit more length and then you take it and you just gently squeeze it and you just get it in there nicely, gently and easy. Okay, and then from there you just top that up and then you've got your beautiful rooty. While I continue with this, are you going to start with the fish? Totally. So what we're going to do is we're going to just try and get the bone totally off. Zaid, are you self-taught or did you go to a school to learn? I am 100% self-taught. I just have a different philosophy on like learning things and learning things faster. We've got beautiful fillet and beautiful steaks out of that. Perfect. We go on to just chopping this up into little steaklets. Thank you very much. You have been absolutely fantastic. I can see you were a professional japati roller in your day. <laughs> so, perfect. We will get started on the curry. We're going to throw the oil into the pot. We're going to add... We're going to start adding the garlic and the ginger to the pot, just to add that flavor and texture. So you want to add about, say, one whole teaspoon. I've just done two halves. And then we're going to add some freshly chopped ginger which is about a quarter teaspoon. Tomatoes are ready and um, let's just peel them off. Zahid, what is a typical work day like for you? My day generally starts with like at 4.30 in the morning mm -hmm. with a 30 minute meditation. I then move on to just a quick like workout for another 45 minutes or I go for a cycle or a surf depending on, on the weather. 
So you're gonna chop it up now? Yes, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this back, get the knife, chop the head, and then get that off. We're then going to add them to the blitzer. We can just get a... Perfect. And then we're gonna let it cook and simmer for about two minutes. We're going to start with the cumin. Just add a teaspoon of that in there. And then some of the fish masala. Give it a nice big heap. We want to add two teaspoons of the tomato paste, of these bay leaves just for texture, some garam masala. Nice one. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to stir this all in. Just add a little bit of water to it, not a lot at a time. We're just going to add these pieces in here. Okay, so now that we've got it all in, we just want to stir it up very gently. And then what we can do is we can just leave the lid slightly, slightly ajar and let it cook and simmer for 10 minutes. Granny Mohammed, thank you so much. All the secrets are coming out. I believe your granny's got this fantastic recipe that you're willing to share with us today. We are going to be making the traditional Cape Malay kusista. We've got some salt over here, we've got an egg, we've got some brown sugar, some desiccated coconut, some butter, fresh yeast, baking powder, cinnamon, orange peel, and then we've got the fresh mozzarella over here, pears, the cake flour, stone ground cake flour, and then a fresh rocket. We're gonna get the flour in there. Do you wanna pour that sure. in? Um, All of it? Yes, please. And then I'm going to need six teaspoons of sugar. We just need to add a half a teaspoon of salt. We can just grind it. One, two, three. And then we will need one teaspoon of baking powder. One knob of uh, wet yeast, which should amount to 10 grams. We're going to start with the orange peel now. And we're going to just julienne this up really fine and then chop it up. And now we just need to add one um, two teaspoons of um, cinnamon. Okay, fantastic. So we've got to just add the orange rind into it, just so that we can get that nicely mixed up in there. Okay, and then onto the wet mix. We're going to add the milk, first of all, to the bowl, and then we're going to add the egg and the two tablespoons of butter and then we add some hot water just to warm it all up so that the butter melts really nicely and then add the wet mixture to the dry and let it all mix through. That looks ready. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. Onto this board. What we want to do is we just want to get this into a nice little bowl. We'll just take a cloth and just cover this for about five minutes. While we wait for that to rise, we can actually start with the salad. Totally. So we're going to start cutting up the pears and getting them really nice, nicely cut up so that they can work really well on the pan. We're going to be melting the butter over on the pot here. One teaspoon of cumin. What would be an alternative to cumin spice? You could use a uh, garam masala mm -hmm. and then mix that around in there. We're going to start plating up our salad mm -hmm. and then just get everything nice and uh, looking good. We'll start chopping up the mozzarella balls. Same way we chop the, the pears, which are in wedges. Little wedges. Mm -hmm. We got the pears. And just beautifully, nicely just drop that over. Beautiful contrast of the green with the mozzarella cheese and this golden pears. Yeah, and that's our salad. Beautiful indeed. That's the starters done. Now you can yes. start with the roti. Okay, fantastic. Those have been in the fridge for approximately 30 minutes. Are you happy with it? Yes, totally happy. How's the taste of roti looking? Okay, well, it's looking absolutely perfect at the moment. It's a good start. 
Okay, so here we've got the first ball for the cusistus, and then we're just gonna put that over on the, on the tray over here. We've gotta make sure that the oil is at its perfect temperature. Okay, so these cusistus are good to go now. Mm. So we just wanna keep them on the paper towel. We've gotta work really fast because if the sugar dries up, it starts burning. Last cusistus done, that means we're ready to serve. Are we ready to serve our guests? With everything ready for service, the ultimate verdict would be delivered at the table. Zahir's overall intention is to create an experience of home and comfort. I'm certainly feeling very at home and I might never leave.